So um, understanding how the behavior works and then understanding what to do to improve, to improve, of course, our behavior and finding strategies, then is the main aim of psychologists. And then something that I find really important for me, because that's my research area, cognitive psychology. I think students at the beginning hear this name, I think, what is it? And how the mind works is how our brain works. And even if you might think, why do I need to understand that? is essential. You need to understand which are the mechanisms in the brain, in our mind, that allows us for me now to talk, for you to understand, for you to focus your attention on me, for example, and ignore what you have around, or for Lucy to remember what I've explained in the lecture and then to learn later on. But also it's not just academic driven that I want to focus my attention on, but the way we studied the mind and the way we understand the mind has attracted so much, much attention. If you see here, I've put in my slides just examples of movies that have been produced and books have been written up to describe phenomena that are strongly related to how the mind works. So I think Inception is something, I don't know if you know this movie, about instilling memories. So it's very important to understand how relevant some subject in psychology are for the humanity because they are very commonly um, taken into consideration. And something now I would like to ask you to just to give you an understanding of why psychology is important and understanding how the mind works is if you can write in the chat, um, look at this image and tell me or write down what you see. Just few things. Lucy, you can do that because I think you've seen this already because I used this in one of my lecture, so you are not allowed to do that. But for the other students, if you want to write down just what you are observing, a description, a few words, it's a bowl of fruit and, and vegetables. Oh, bowl of vegetables. I think someone vegetables or oh, the chat is going too fast. I'm missing. Um, the name of the first student who actually is the only one, yeah, could see it, yeah, bowl of vegetables, Angelina, perfect. Autumn vegetables, yeah, this is very um, upside down, Ve yeah, 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 yeah. I think Saskia, Saskia's got, got it. Can you see something else now, still vegetables? Something else here? A face, yes, yes, exactly. And uh, before telling you what's happening, of course, I'm not going to give you. Yeah, OK, so Saskia, yeah, was cheating. That's fine. Um, so before telling you why this happened, so you could not see the face. I want to ask you this one as well. Are these two faces exactly the same or are they different? Again, Lucy, you can't see anything because you've seen it. No, different, yeah. Can you also tell me or write down where is the difference? Eyes and mouth, okay, that's correct. Okay, now if I show you the face upright, now you'll see, you still can see that there are differences, but you have a whole perception of how the face on the right is like a monster, is really terrible. So what happens, and I, again, I'm not going to go through the details, is that the brain process faces in a very specific way. And if you disrupt this way by inverting the face, the brain doesn't recognize a face anymore or doesn't really pick tiny differences very clearly. And that's because uh, we process faces in very, very precise way. And it's very important to understand from a cognitive perspective how this happened, because there are cases, for example, in eyewitness testimony, for example, people seem to recognize faces and then at the end it turns out that they are not the correct faces or in brain damage patients, people who can't recognize faces. There are people with specific damages. They can't discriminate between a friend and a completely unfamiliar face. And understanding what is happening in the brain then allows us to understand what we can do to help them. So that's just a very simple example of why in psychology we need to understand the behavior from very uh, important uh, foundations. But then, 
in the second, and I'd say especially in the third year in psychology, you really decide in which direction you want to go. And if you still don't know which direction, at least you decide what's your nature, what what you like and what you dislike. The good and bad side of psychology is that it's broad, so it has lots of things that you will meet you might not like and others you will really like. But on the other side, it allows you really to have a very a variety of options in the future. And so in the third year, you can decide if you want to focus more on clinical psychology, if you want to focus more on research and cognitive neuroscience, for example, and that's the strength of the degree that we are offering. In the third year, you really narrow down your interest in psychology. And where this happened is in a huge building, very new, we moved two years ago, as a very modern science building, that's how it's called. This one's our offices. It's such a long time I haven't been there, so I feel a bit nostalgic now I'm presenting this picture. These tiny windows here are tiny rooms where students do experiment because in psychology you are a researcher, you will be a scientist. So students do experiment during the three years, and then we have massive lecture theatres where usually we give main lectures but then we also need to work really with small numbers of students in seminars practical activities and so we have smaller rooms where students are usually divided in groups where we do group works we do practical activities we have lots of computers where of course we can do our activities and well apart from what lucy would say later on the main important message that we receive from students is that at the end of the three years then students feel that they are experiencing what a psychologist is of course it's huge so psychology is too broad discipline to really have a clear understanding of everything but given the variety of modules that students have they have a general understanding of different aspects of psychology and especially in the third year students undertake a, a, an independent project with a supervisor so they have definitely an experience a hands-on activity on what psychology really looked like and just to conclude as a university we really take into consideration your future. So uh, in Anglo Ruskin is ranked as the fifth university in terms of proportion of students who work after roughly a year after graduating, or if they don't work, they are in further study because that's actually amazing if you can just carry on and do a master or a PhD as well. And in psychology, especially in the last years, we have worked a lot in terms of your employability, the skills that we want you to develop, not just to become a psychologist, but to really be prepared for the world of work. And just one thing, last thing for you, for you, write down if you can, uh, example of jobs you could do if you are an uh, undergraduate psychology student. You've just finished, imagine you in a few years, you've got your degree in psychology, what can you do? Give me an idea. I have here some answers for you, but I want to see what well, you you know about it. A psychotherapist? Yes, you can. You need further training, but of course you definitely need a BSc in psychology to do that. Someone else, any very different, for example, let's move away from the clinical setting that is what well, definitely is uh, perhaps the most known field. Any vague idea what you can do? I'll give you some, just some. Forensic, yes, definitely you can. And it helps a lot if you do a psychology with criminology, for example, degree, because it will um, give you some idea. Psychology and economics, wow, great. Yeah, now that we are, I can tell you, we are a school of psychology and sports science. Yeah, you can be a CBT therapist as well, perfect. And here's some. Now that's just to give you an example. When I was saying psychology is broad, it's a massive discipline, that what I was meaning. You can really uh, at the end find your way that is very different from someone else's because psychology is not just um, a limited field, but it, it keeps you with some skills that actually you can use for many, many 
different jobs. I'm now waiting for one of my students, for example, to let me know about her results. She's trying to become a policy officer and then. Yeah, we'll see. Finger, neuro, neuropsychologist. Yes, this is absolutely right. So just an example, some examples. And finally, what we have uh, to offer you, just to give you an idea of what the School of Psychology and Sports Science has, we have lots of facilities. So we have labs with um, specialized equipment to measure brain activity, um, many, many lab spaces for students to test and to study. We have, as a university, a lot of commitment for supporting students as a staff and other students, has been other students as well. Now we really try to um, increase the support that student needs. Then another thing, we are in Cambridge, so you also have to think about where you would like to leave. Cambridge is lovely. Again, I've been in London, so I know both, um, and they are both great, but yeah, it's much quieter at Cambridge. At least I can cycle everywhere. In London, I would not do that. We really try to prepare you for the world of work. That's, that's where you have to do. I mean, you can study because you are passionate about it and that's essential, but then at the end of the day, you have to find a job and we work hard to do that. And then we have a very uh, important community in Anglo asking staff and students are very interested in working together and I'm very passionate about it and I'm developing lots and lots of activities to really make the community more inclusive and as inclusive as possible. So I hope I gave you a flavor, but of course it's impossible to explain everything in such a short amount of time, but I'm very happy to take any questions. And um, if you also have questions later on, I'm very happy for Ben to circulate my contact details and I will be very happy to receive emails if you want to ask more. Okay, thank you. Um, before we move on to this, is there any questions you want to ask? Please put in the chat. I missed the first part of this. Is there a specific course for sport psychology? No, there is not a, a course in sport psychology, but you can definitely get, I would say, a normal degree in psychology, a general one, and then for the specialized in sport psychology. What are the entry requirement for the course? So we have the website. If you want, I can then send Ben, I can send you the link to the website. Uh, each course has a um, slightly different entry requirements that every year are adjusted. So I will send you the link so that you can see exactly which are the score for each of the um, three courses. Could I still do psychology if I'm not studying it in A-level? Yes, of course, absolutely. We consider we have students from everywhere, not just from the UK, so they have completely different background. We start psychology from scratch. This means that someone might find that there is something they've heard already, but of course we do it in more, more deeply, I'd say, but you don't need to have psychology in the A-level. Definitely. Are there any just good to, uh, places? Uh, just to add on that quick, I mentioned at the start, I mean, I've got a psychology degree, it's over 20 years ago, but I didn't study psychology A-level. OK, and it does feel, to give you a personal, again, my example is historic, but, you know, it, it kind of feels like you're having to work quite hard in the first year, I think, in comparison to an A-level student, but you soon catch up. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. So. And again, because we now really have an international community, you can't really rely on what's happening on the other side of the world. You don't know. So we definitely don't take that into consideration. Um, Lucy, are there any good places to get work experience for a psychology career path? Yes, everywhere. I have to be honest that um, you have to think about your work experience in steps. At the beginning, whatever you do is important because you develop interpersonal skills, for example, that are essential for a psychologist and you can do that even working in a restaurant. OK, so at the beginning, I think think about your work experience. I've just had a meeting with some um, employability people say we need students with work experience. What the work experience is at the moment is not important, but you need to start practicing a bit. So then, of course, what you can always do is try to volunteering. That's another important thing. 
and everyone is open to that. And then test, what would you need after an undergrad degree if you wanted to go into clinical? Clinical has many different options, but usually you need to study uh, more years and do some extra training. Could be uh, one year of master. It depends, again, which type of clinical pathway you want. If you want to be a, someone, I don't remember, who said before a psychotherapist and CBT therapist, then you need to study a um, few more years and then do a doc clinical doctorate. And in that case, then you will be able to practice as a clinical psychologist. And Lily, how can I catch up on what should I read if I haven't done psychology A level? So what I happened in the past is that I had some students like you who got in touch with me before starting and I recommended them very general books on psychology if you want and if you want to spend the summer doing some reading so that's absolutely possible you just get in touch with the course leader and we give you some easy reading for you otherwise i don't really think you should be worried about catching up or falling behind at the beginning because others have done psychology a level um at the university you approach it from a different perspective so i think a level gives you the idea if you're interested or not but the knowledge is definitely built up in the three years with us don't worry but i am very happy for you to drop me an email and i can recommend you some reading is it possible to visit the campus in person right now joshua right now uh, is hard we have students coming back because now there there are some courses that have started face to face but i think visits are limited so you can perhaps send an email to our uh, admission office and see what they say, but I have the feeling that because of all the safety measure, the distance, we are just reducing the number of students and accepting just the ones that have to go and um, have the teaching face to face. But I hope in September it will be back to normality. Emily, if I have an idea of what psychology I want to go into, can I still study general psychology? Should I do the course with insight to the part I'm interested in? No, Emily, I think even if you have an idea, I think psychology, the general one, is the one that I tend to recommend to students, even if I'm very happy to support going to the other ones. But if you have an idea, but you are not still 100% sure, start with the general one. And there are options sometimes if after the first year you've decided that perhaps your idea is very strong, then you can move to one of the other courses if that's possible. If you have to catch up some modules, you can catch up some modules, but like between general psychology and clinical psychology, the first year we keep them the same so that student can really reflect for one year and then make a final decision later on. Any more questions? Maybe let's make sure we get through to Lucy and then we'll come back to any more questions. Yes, so you can. Yeah. Yeah. Write them down and while Lucy talks, I can answer yeah. in the chat if you want. OK, thank you. Right, let's go over to. So if you've just if you join the session late, um, Lucy is a second year student studying a BSc psychology, um, Anglia Ruskin, and she's going to she hasn't got slides. She's, she's going to talk to you, I suppose, through some of her experiences and maybe why she chose it. And um, over to you, Lucy. OK. Hi, uh, yeah, as, as Ben said, I'm Lucy. I'm a second year psychology student um, at Anglia Ruskin. And I'd say I've really, really enjoyed my time so far at Anglia Ruskin, um, especially my first year. It's um, it, it was a really, really good, good, uh, good experience. And I learned so much about myself and about psychology in general. And I know that is really cheesy, but it, it's true. Um, you do learn a, a lot about yourself when you come to uh, when you come to university. Uh, so the course uh, psychology that I study is very interesting. I specifically enjoyed the modules uh, social and developmental psychology and issues in child development and social psychology. So for me, the, the key theme there was social psychology. Uh, I find that the lecturers are really thorough with the information, but it's presented in a way which it, it's interesting and engaging. So you're not going to you know, fall asleep halfway through. It is really engaging and interesting, which is what I like. Um, and there's also really good uh, support provided uh, with assignments. Uh, this was something that I was I was quite worried about before I came to uni, as I wasn't the greatest at writing essays and things like that. But I've had no issues with that so far, and there's so much support and examples that are given throughout um, and on Canvas, which is a platform that we use for all of our information and our lectures. So I found that really helpful. Um, I would say Freshers' Week was really really fun. 
Um, and it did help me make friends, some of which I live with now, I'm still friends with, so that's great. Um, and Anglia Ruskin, they put on a lot of events during the day and at night. So I remember there was an outdoor movie night that we did once, giant outdoor games. So it's a really good way to make friends and to find out, you know, what you're into and help you settle in a little bit more to make it more, more fun and just engage with everybody. Um, so that's something that I really, I really would recommend just joining in as much as you can during Freshers Week. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's going to be like when you join. Hopefully everything will be back to normal and things can be um as good as they can be um but i guess we'll just see but any, any way it is freshers week is is really good um and in psychology we have uh, something called a personal development tutor group so this is around 20 students in and there's one tutor so this is the same group throughout all of your degree and it's really helpful because you get to ask questions in your session once a week, which you may not be able to ask in your lecture, um, because sometimes in lectures there's quite a lot of people, sometimes over 100 people, and you may not get the opportunity to ask a question or you may not be confident enough to get your point across. So this is a really good way that if you're a little bit more shy, like I, I was at the beginning of my degree, it's it's a, a very handy way for you to um, to ask your questions and get all the information that you need. So these PDT sessions are once a week in first year and then um, once or twice a trimester in your second year. Um, so and they also help you develop skills um, such as referencing and your scientific style of writing, which is very handy because it makes the transition between college and sixth form to university that much easier because I left sixth form not having many skills of essay writing and just generally sort of what you would need in university. So that really did make it much easier for me. And I did appreciate the help that I got from my tutor. Um, and so, as I said, I, I'm my second year and I've lived away from home since starting university. And it, it can be tough sometimes, but it's really good because it helps you learn new skills and it helps you grow in independence. Um, I was worried about living away from home and being by myself when I first joined. But Angler Ross can provide a lot of support, like counselling and wellbeing sessions, which if you do need them, they're very handy. But you just get on with it and it's really, really good fun. I would recommend living um, living in halls or away from home if you can. But I know lots of people that uh, commuted and they've had the exact same experience. They've enjoyed every minute of it. So whatever is best for you, really, I would say. Um, and obviously at the moment, the COVID pandemic, it's quite difficult. Um, so working as a student through COVID has been a challenge um, because it's meant that we've had to engage in distance and mixed learning, which is still um, that still to the highest quality, um, but it can be difficult to keep concentration during these sessions as it's, it's over teams um, and it can be hard to keep yourself engaged. But there are live lectures and pre-recorded ones, so that really does help. Um, but we've just got to remember that everybody's in the same boat and sometimes it feels like it's sinking, but you just got to keep paddling, you know, and that is cringy to say, I know, but it is just extremely true. We've just got to keep going because um, the end is in sight. And I would say that hopefully in September, um, things will be back to normal whenever you decide to join. Hopefully we can welcome you properly. Um, and so I'm, I'm a senior prefect, uh, prefect, ambassador, I was there. Uh, I'm a senior student ambassador, <laughs> getting a bit confused there. Um, so this is flexible work. So if you have um, any financial worries, then the university can help you. If you talk to ARU Temps, they can help you find work which fits um, around your student schedule. So something that I'm doing now. So I'm, I've got a lot of work that I have to get on, like assignment work and lectures and things in my second year. It's very busy. So I found that getting a part time job may be a little bit difficult to try and fit around all of my lectures. So being a student ambassador means that I get to pick and choose which events that I help out with and you get paid the living wage. So it's, it's good money and I help out with things like um, open days, UCAS events, giving campus tours virtually and actually on campus and things like this, Q&A sessions. So being an ambassador has really built my confidence because I said earlier at the beginning of my first year, I was very very nervous i couldn't even look at anybody let alone speak to sort of you know public speaking to over 30 people it's something that i found very difficult before but now i'm much more confident i can do those things without feeling like i want to throw up uh, so i would definitely recommend being an ambassador to anybody and also trying to join in societies 
Um, there are many, many societies that the university have. Uh, and if there isn't one that you like, then if you get enough people, you can start your own. Um, so definitely, definitely have a look at societies and just try everything that you can in university because um, it broadens your day to day activities and it's just a really good way to make friends. Um, and I would I would definitely say that you just just give it a go if you can. Um, and. Um, yeah, and so I was going to I was going to say that. If you have any questions about anything that I've said or anything that I haven't mentioned, then please just put them in the chat. I'll try and answer them the best I can. Um, or if you haven't got any questions, I can try and think of something else that I think that might be um, interesting for you to hear, like the um, fact that we have career focused quizzes. So these are um, quizzes that help you make the link between your career and the assignments that you've done and your modules. So that's very helpful. It's very career focused, Anglia Ruskin, which I do feel is very good to help me because I'm going to want to get into a good career when I leave. But I'll have a look at the questions and then if not, I'll find something else to talk about. <laughs> Let's have a look. Right. So why did you first choose Anglia Ruskin above other universities? Why the facilities for your psychology course that work best for you? OK, so I chose Anglia Ruskin because when I visited it on the open day, it was just so friendly. It was such a nice atmosphere. I could go up to anybody and they would help me out. It was just very welcoming and I really liked that. And I like the fact that it's in Cambridge, which is a beautiful city. Um, and it it was it's a small enough campus, but it's, it's large at the same time. It's, it's very hard to explain without seeing it. It's it's big, but you don't feel like you're going to get lost everywhere. Um, it took me sort of, I would say, a week or two to get myself around it and know where everything is. So that's very nice. Um, and for the facilities, the Science Centre is something which I would definitely say did draw me towards um, towards Anglia Ruskin. When I visited it, it was it was brand new. Um, and there are you know, state of the art facilities in there, um, like the super lab. And then there's like um, there's study study session labs. The uh, the lecture theater is is very large. I think there's about 300 seats in there. So it means that everybody can fit in in the same place. And I did really like that rather than having to be in smaller groups in your co uh, in your cohort. Everybody could be together, which meant that teaching was was a bit better. Um, so that's why I, I chose Anglia Ruskin and also when I looked at the modules um, they just all appealed to me there wasn't anything that I didn't like I like the fact that there was a um, there was a, a module called theoretical foundations and psychology I'm not sure if it will be there when you join but it was um, a good way for everybody to get on the same level of understanding so even if you hadn't studied psychology beforehand um, everybody came with the same knowledge after they've had that module which was which was very good um, for those who didn't. I studied it at psych uh, in, uh, I studied psychology in sixth form, so I already had some prior knowledge, but it was good just to sort of make that concrete in my head and just um, and just sort of solidify it. But yeah, that's why I chose Anglia Ruskin over the other universities. It just appealed to me. Um, everyone's different, but for me, that was that was why. I don't think we have any other questions, unless anybody. Oh. When did you know you wanted to study psychology? OK, so this question, um, I was in year 11 and we had to choose what we wanted to do at sixth form. And for me, it was a, a toss up between psychology and philosophy and ethics. And I chose psychology because I was just so interested in it. And I don't know why something just drew me towards it. I can't explain it. Um, I just like the fact of trying to understand people, why people do things. Um, and just what's going on in our brain, because you can't see into the brain, but it just it just fascinates me. Um, and I'd say studying psychology, it's not something that you sort of realise that you want to do. You sort of, you can just feel that you want to do it. And I really don't know how to explain it, but I looked at the uh, the information of all the things I would study in sixth form. I thought that's really really interesting. I started studying it, and I thought, yeah, this is for me. And then I decided in year 13, I was like, oh, I really want to go further in this and broaden my broaden and deepen my knowledge. So I chose I wanted to study it at uni. Any other questions? Doesn't seem like it. Um, so if you do have anything, just pop it in the chat. 
Okay, all right. Thank you, Lucy. It's been really, 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 really useful insight there. Um, I suppose let's just leave it open for any other questions, um, just generally either to Lucy or um, Flavia. Um, I mean, just to sort of say, I mean, I've been a career advisor with college for a number of years. I might say at the start, if you were like, psychology is always one of our, our most popular degree options. It's always up there with um, um, psychology and law, always the two most individual. Um, very and I would different, really, though. Sorry, very different, yeah. I mean, and I, I would, I would re reiterate that point that was raised about, you know, if you know what you want to do, maybe with psychology, I, I would reiterate the point about doing this sort of general degree first because it will open your ideas and I'm going to know from my own personal undergraduate experience from many years ago it will open your ideas to you know open your interests to other things or may reconfirm that's where you want to go um yeah I think still I, I think it's still the BSc psychology C800 course isn't it that, that's one that's that's the UK's code is most popular I think um I definitely agree with what you said there, because um, I've I've always had this thought that I want to be a speech and language therapist, but I didn't know if I definitely wanted to do that. So I decided to choose psychology to study because um, it does cover um, like speech comprehension and production in like child development and uh, learning memory perception and new cognitive modules. So I thought it was something which um, I could go into have some more a broader understanding and a broader degree before I went into something more specific and learning um, these these modules has sort of made me realize that I definitely do want to go into it so I would recommend doing something more broad before and then going into the more specifics. Yeah I totally agree with Lucy it's such a heterogeneous discipline that works on skills more than very narrow and specific content. You develop skills, not just knowledge. That's easy, but the skills that you gain in three years working with us then are much more important for finding any job. And just to reiterate some of the points that were raised, I like your slide on sort of as a career consultant, I like your slide on sort of career progression of, you know, psychology undergraduates. Like, I mean, you really should be, and this is advice for anyone, even if you're you're in this talk today because you're not sure about psychology or you think of other things. I mean, you should be picking psychology as your undergraduate degree if you have an interest academically in it, not because you have an interest. I want to become this kind of psychologist. Those ideas and things can change. You know, the careers and employability departments at Angley Ruskin, are in it. that's their job to take that on board there further. But you should have that academic interest, as Lucy, you know, indicated. You should be looking at modules. You know, you should be comparing and contrasting module course content and that should be your reasons for picking psychology and it may be a career you go into but you know you're going to have to do lots of further study masters phds afterwards and and you know and a psychology degree itself is a good baseline as was discussed for loads of careers for lots of things you're really employable aren't you yeah um, question about dorm system i don't know how it works I can answer that. Um, yeah. I'm not a, um, a specific uh, accommodation ambassador, but I, I know enough about this. So there is um, there is a housing system. So um, we have student accommodations. So there are on campus and off campus accommodations and they are a first come first serve basis. But all first year students, if you want to live in student accommodation, you do get priority over any other years that want to stay in their accommodation. So all first year students who do want to live on campus and you say the or in student accommodation, you do get priority and you will get somewhere. So we have um, Peter Taylor House, which is on campus. This is all en suite um, and it's, ve it's very close to the Science Centre. It's literally not even a two minute walk away. So you can get up five minutes before your lecture and then get in there. <laughs> I may have done that once or twice, but no, I was a very prepared student apart from that. Um, and then on campus is also Swinho, which is ensuite and shared bathrooms. And then the off campus accommodation is Anastasia House, which is just opposite the uni. So it, it's basically on campus too, as it's literally not even a 30 second walk away. Um, and then off campus, there's CB1 and the rail yard. Uh, so they tend to be slightly more expensive but, and the further away. I'm not too far. They're at the train station, which is about, a, I'd say, 15 minute walk away from the university. But your question, uh, yeah, first years do get priority um, over anybody that wants to 
renew their stay. Um, so if you do specify that you want to live in student accommodation, you will get it. But it is a first come first serve basis of what you get. So you put your first choice and your second choice. And if you do it quick enough at the deadline, then you will get your first choice. I did, so it's not too bad, it's good. I think I have a question about scholarship and bursary. Now, I don't know uh, in particular the financial of, uh, offers and opportunities. I know that the school offers scholarship over the summer, sometimes for students to work with us, so they have a small salary over the summer to do some research, or as Lucy said, we have some pay job opportunities for students, of course, to uh, get some money throughout the three years and being involved in something that is relevant also for your CV. But definitely if you want to have more information about scholarships, then you can get in touch with our financial office. Again, normally with um, bursaries and scholarships or um, accommodations is a general point. Only when you pick a university is a firm choice you can really apply for those because that's when you're showing the commitment to the university isn't it really so okay any last questions from anyone it's crammed a lot in this session from 11 since a lot of information has been brilliant any other final questions okay so just to reiterate i know obviously you, know, you may be going to different talks but they're, they're kind of there is a, a social science talk taking place at one o'clock. I can see from Ang Angie Ruskin. So if you're in this talk here today, um, that might be a good one to attend as well. I would say, and there's also a sociology talk. In three, obviously different to psychology, but they're in the similar kind of branch. So, okay, right. So thank you. Thank you. Today. Yeah, no, it's been it's been a really really useful session. I hope you as students have found it useful. And um, yeah. Myself and Janet, the careers advisors here, we're happy to see you to make appointments. What, what I would say to you as well, if you have, if you just want big general careers point, make sure you're using Unifrog. That's the sort of material, that's a program we've used for you to help you with your resort, you know, research. Unifrog is such a brilliant um, resource, really. So, okay, that's it. Thanks. Have a nice rest of the day. Yeah. yeah thank you again. Bye bye. Bye bye.